Hello and welcome to my Spring 2024 Linux Phone Review Update video. Haven't done one of these in a while, so figured I should probably uh, give an update. Uh, typically, uh, I've gone over different software on the Pine Phone, um, as that's probably the best known or most versatile Linux phone out there. Uh, but I'm actually not going to be doing anything with the Pine Phone today because over the past six months to maybe a year or so, I've tried multiple different operating systems and still had just a whole bunch of issues. Text messaging, calling, uh, alarm clocks, data, camera, whatever, all sorts of things that just did not work. There's typically one OS that'll, whatever function it is, it'll work fine and the others don't and that just moves down the line. So I'm not quite sure why all these features work correctly, but in different OS's and UI's. I think one could kind of consolidate it down to one, but apparently not. I'm not a developer, so I don't know a whole bunch about that stuff. Um, but for now, I will be ignoring the Pine Phone uh, because nothing has changed. I believe I recommended uh, using something like EOS or Lineage OS or some open source operating system. And that does work. Um, I was using that for a while. This was my main phone. Yes, it's old. No, I don't care. But then I switched over to this recently. And this ticks most boxes for me. Um, it's a new phone, 2021 I believe. Uh, 5G support, theoretically. Software's not quite there. It's a Sony Xperia 10 III. Uh, headphone jack, USB-C, SD card expansion. Uh, fairly small. I wish it was smaller, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. And most importantly, we have Linux in the form of Sailfish OS. Uh, something that is available on the Pine Phone, but only officially supported on... Not this phone specifically, but uh, there's a few phones. But this is one of the uh, officially supported phones. Probably could have said that better. Oh well. Um, I'm not going to go over the hardware too much, so let's just jump into the software. Alright, so as is probably obvious, this is the lock screen. You can slide either way to unlock it. Um, you've also got an option to open the camera from the bottom. Um, I'll go over that later. But you also have the option to use biometric data. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but I think that's probably the phone. Um, here's the main screen. Uh, yeah, it looks bland. Unfortunately, it's not like Android or kind of really any operating system. Aside from maybe BlackBerry 10 OS, this is also your app switcher. All your apps live in a drawer down here. Uh, you can reorganize them, whatnot. Uh, these are all applications that run natively on the phone up until F-Droid because you can run Android apps on here. Um, unfortunately, I believe the Android uh, on Sailfish OS, whatever it is, the compatibility layer, VM, I don't know how it works. Apparently it's not entirely open source. Um, actually, neither is this operating system as a whole. Most of it is, but the uh, user interface is closed source, which isn't ideal, but I'll take that over, well, something like iOS or a non-open Android ROM at all. Uh, I do enjoy Linux-based things for, <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, you can change the theme, of course, the background. I'm uh, not really going to go over that too much. Um, it's pretty standard. You can just go under the settings. Maybe, and I think this phone has a slight issue with the digitizer, but I don't know 100%. Here's all your settings, uh, not going to go into the accounts, but uh, you can slide over to apps and change app settings through here. Slide back over there. It would be under the ambiences, but I have a couple custom ones set. Uh, if you want to set a custom wallpaper, you hold down on whatever picture you want to set as the wallpaper, and then I believe it gives you the option to set the ambience. This is what they call the theme. Uh, these settings might be slightly different. I do have the paid version of Sailfish OS, which cost roughly 55 US dollars. Uh, I believe it's only officially 
supported in Europe. Um, so I had to do some interesting things to get a hold of a copy. Uh, it's about 50 euros. So, and others that it's not officially supported in the U.S., but on T-Mobile in the U.S. it does work. Uh, just a little difficult to get in the first place. There's a free version of this, but you don't get stuff like Android apps. I don't think you get VOLTE, although I don't know 100% on that. They do have a whole rundown on their website. Um, there's kind of a neat thing, in my opinion at least, with the native apps. This is a third-party app store, but it is native to Sailfish OS, and that's it's all translucent. It kind of reminds me of maybe Windows Vista 7, but also maybe the newer version to Mac OS. Um, I think it's kind of neat. Uh, so you could go through here and install applications if you want to. Again, these are all native, just third-party app store. There's the Jala store, I think is how you pronounce it. This has all the native officially supported apps or whatever. Don't really know 100%. Um, there's really no good map oh, or uh, map application on here. So I have Magic Earth via the Android compatibility layer. Um, haven't actually used it yet with the GPS, but I know it does load in. Although I'm not going to open that up. Um, I'll open up uh, the KISS launcher here. Uh, you don't need this. I just had it so I could go through the Android settings. And I guess there's all the apps on the Android side. Uh, this is a gesture-based operating system, which is a little finicky, but it does work. Um, really the main issue, at least with this phone and the OS, is the camera selection. Uh, it, you can't have all three back cameras and the front camera available to select in the camera app for some weird reason. So I got this little add-on, um, which allows me to switch it up here. You can also do it via the terminal, uh, which is included on the OS. Um, but I never use the front camera, so I simply have the... Come on. This is a phone issue, not an OS issue. <laughs> um, so I can select between the cameras right there. But like I said, I never used the front camera, so I just simply don't care. Um, I think that's probably most of the things here going through the OS. Um, notifications, you just swipe to the right or left. Um, the email works fine, um, text messaging, calling, uh, the camera with the exception of that weird thing. Everything on here works, uh, minus the stock weather app. I changed that out. Apparently they haven't updated their keys for whatever service they use. I don't know, but that's a little weird. But uh, otherwise, the, the OS just works, just like using any other phone as far as I'm aware. Obviously the UI is different. Um, and it does follow a mostly open source standard. It uses the RPM package management. Uh, I kind of wonder what version of uh, XZ is on here, now that I think about it. But if it even has it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, OS. I should also mention it does encrypt all the files. So you have to I don't know, unlock it on boot up. I don't know if there's a way to disable that. I'm fine with it, so I'm just going to let it encrypt the whole internal memory. I don't think it touches the SD card for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, unfortunately, not much has changed with the Pine Phone, like I already discussed before. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, if you're looking for a kind of true Linux phone, this could be it. Uh, again, no official support outside of Europe, but it works so far. So, hopefully uh, in a future video I can show the Pine Phone running as I think it should, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So, until next time, I hope you all have a great day.